97.3 City FM, Relevant Radio, always. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Politicals on City TV with me, Umaru Sanda Amadou. This week, the IEA presidential debate, that would never be, or would it rather be, because the NCC is not competing with the IEA, would it ever happen and which political party will be involved? We'll find out. Also, the anti-corruption summit that has been dubbed as corrupt in itself. Uh, the Nigerian president is not very happy with comments made by David Cameron, the host. Our president is there. He said he has never taken a bribe before. Have you? We'll find out from you soon and they'll also have a discussion on that. And finally, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has come into the news this week and he's telling us that some $250 million of the euro bond that was procured by the government has been misused or diverted. He is even saying it's a criminal act which demands the Minister for Finance resigns. Will he or will he not? That's up for discussion on Politicos. Since election 2000, the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, has been organizing presidential debates. Some have been boycotted. Some have been attended. Some of the people who boycotted turned around and took part in the debate. But this time around though, it seems the boycott is even more real than can imagine. As we speak, the NPP has not decided on whether it will go or not. The NDC on the other side is battling the IEA to quote, the IEA is not a headmaster to summon their candidate before them for a debate without prior consent. The smaller parties are even more angry because they think they have been discriminated against. Dr. Papa Kwesindum of the PPU, for instance, thinks it's an affront to the 1992 constitution. Now, the IEA is even being challenged now by the NCC, who are also telling us they are going to host another debate. Would the IEA be crowded out? And can the IEA even conduct this presidential debate? Sixus Don Ulo has been monitoring events and been speaking to political parties. What is the anger of the minority political parties especially? Huge, Sanda. Huge. Because the minority political parties are of the opinion that they have not been given an equal platform. And if you look at the, 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 the character or credibility of a platform like the IEA platform, they think that this is a platform that is independent, this is a platform that is credible, this is a platform that should be all-inclusive. And if you go into the background of IEA, they will tell you they promote multi-party democracy. So the question, for instance, Bernard Mona, chairman of the PNC, asked was, if the institution that proclaims to be promoting uh, multi-party democracy tends to want to entrench a two-party system, how can we ever conceive that? So the, the minority political parties are really, really not happy. So they want to join the debate. They are now clamoring to be allowed to join the debate. The other parties that have been allowed the free will, the NDC and the MPP, they are not very excited about joining the debate, are they? They are not either because they think that they have not been properly consulted, you know, on the matter. Uh, but consultation means what? Well, they think that the IEA should have asked them, you know, sat down with them before uh, coming out to announce the, the shadow. You know, the IEA has already told us that they are going to start the whole process in June, that's just next month. They'll start with the, the evening encounters followed by the presidential debate. And so if you are going to have these things that are going to involve the presidential candidates and you did not consult with the political parties before coming out with the days, how sure could you be that the presidential candidates would find convenience in those days that have already been announced? And the IEA had a fiery response, didn't they? They did, they did, because they think that the, the uh, executive director, Jane Mensa, particularly when, when she spoke with us, she said that, look, this is still a consultative process. We have merely launched the program, and so there's no need for us to uh, more or less consult you before launching the program. The consultations come after okay. the launching of the program. Quickly, the National Commission for Civic Education, they have also made an announcement. And that, that announcement has been met with opposition from the IEA, of course, because the IEA feels that the opposition has been taken away from them. What is the IEA, NCC going to do and how different would that be from IEA? And what, how would that affect the IEA's usual debates? 
it is not it is not expected to affect the IEA's usual schedule in any way because this same question was actually posed to the IEA at, on the day they launched the program and uh, Dr. Michael um, the, uh, Dr. Michael Ofori Mensa, the uh, senior research fellow in charge of governance, he was clear on that. He said they are not in this for the, the, the prestige of it. They, they, they don't want, it's not like they want to boost their credibility. It is something they are already familiar with. They think they are creating the platform. So it, it would in no way affect the But do you foresee NC taking part? NC no, 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 no. Doing the no, no, no. From the, the, the information we gathered, uh, City News gathered, it indicated that the NCCE even is yet to finalize a lot of the things that they have. It just means they, they don't look ready, but they, they might get ready. ready. By they November, it's a few months away. I mean, some six months away. But thank you very much. Six to Don Ulo with an analysis of the IEA or is the NCCE presidential debate for November elections. Let's go to London now because there's an anti-corruption summit ongoing there. A number of presidents are converging on the UK's capital for that discussion, which is hosted by David Cameron, the Prime Minister of that country. Prior to the meeting, he had been saying some things against the president of Afghanistan and Nigeria. They didn't take lightly to it. But our own president, John Dramani Mahama, was there and was interviewed by the BBC and he said something about bribes. Eugenia, you're welcome. Eugenia Tinkra is uh, with uh, City News and welcome to Political. Thank Politico. you very much, Sandra. What did the president say? Because it just seemed to be generating a lot of uh, response and feedback on social, social media. media. Exactly, mm. Sandra. So the president yesterday granted an interview to the BBC and he was asked a direct question. Have you been offered a bribe before? Well, after going around a bit, the president answered that, well, everybody at a certain point in time encounters a corrupt activity but what matters is how strong you are to run away from that you know corruption. so the president also spoke about how here in ghana back home i mean he has said that he rejected he has never accepted a bribe he didn't say whether or not he has given a bribe but he also spoke about here in the country ghana his activities that he's putting in place or measures he's putting in place to expose corruption what was his argument but well, he seems to be uh, lashing out at previous presidents Exactly. Well, he has said that unlike previous presidents, he doesn't wait for evidence before he fights corruption and that he tackles corruption head on. And here, the MMT bus Brandon Saga will quickly come to mind. You know, the then former transport, the then um, transport minister Jifra. resigned, mm. Jifa Tibo, she resigned because of that saga. But people think that that is not enough in fighting corruption because they feel Jifa Tibo is only being used as a scapegoat and the other corporates are being covered. But so the, the president thinks he's a feather in his cap, so we exactly, should celebrate exactly him for that. Exactly, that he's fighting hard the corruption. Kanka. I see. Kanka. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eugenia. Thank you. Let's do some financial matters now, shall we? We know that we have some 1 billion euro bond in our account or in our name, Ghana. Then the finance ministry or is it government decided to invest a quarter of that. The MPP running mate, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, who himself was one time deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana, is not happy. He thinks it's even a criminal act for that diversion to have been done. Vivian Kai Loko is head of business here at CTF. I mean, she joins us on political. So welcome, Vivian. Thank you. Is it not a smart decision to take a quarter of the money we have and invest it elsewhere in UBA Bank? Why is Dr. Baumia worried? Not fully, especially when there are rules to the game. The rule says any money that's in a foreign currency, nobody has a right to touch it by the Bank of Ghana. You cannot deal with that money. So the moment you take that money and use it or put it somewhere else as a government official, then you're going against the law. The BOG um, Act 623, I believe, Section 83 of it says, all foreign exchange accounts must be managed by the Bank of Ghana. So from Baumier's point of view, the moment Sir Tekpa took that money and diverted it into a private account, it's a violation of the law. But, now, but, but a private account was a state account, isn't it? But it's, 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 it's not being managed by the Bank of Ghana. Okay. The Bank of Ghana should have done that if, it were, if, if, if such an amount of money is to be diverted, not Finance Minister Sir Tekwe. But if you listen to Sir Tekwe, he says he sought advice from the financial um, guys around him and they thought it wasn't a contravention of the law. Okay. But let's look at the two sides and to what we'll gain from what or from who. Now, 
um, the part, the 250 million dollars that was sent to the UBA account accrued as 5% interest. Okay. But the same money, if it's sitting in the UBA account, is being used to you buy. Mean, you mean at the Bank of Ghana account or UBA? The account? UBA account. Okay. It's being used to buy treasury bills. Treasury bills is the, the interest is going over 23% as we speak. So there are issues with even what we'll get. Even though if it's sitting in the Bank of Ghana account, it will yield no interest. And it is uh, a sensible thing to put and invest, um, invest in and, and make some money. Is the money we are getting good enough? Okay. Especially when any bank, which is business, will use your money to, uh, you know, go into um, treasury bills, any kind of investment, so it doesn't sit idle, and then they make some amount of money out of it. What is this thing about we paying interest to UBA? Because um, um, UBA use the money for treasury bills. So we are so in a sense losing, losing our, money, our, on our money, own money on our money on our own money. But then it comes to say who, who instructed who to do what when that money was sent there. Who, what was UBA told to do with the money? Or UBA was just supposed to do some investment that would have accrued as that 5% he, um, Sir Tekba is talking about. So there's still, it's still not clear on who said what and what was supposed to be used for what. But from what Sir Tekba says, they were able to accrue $25 million on the $250 million. What is clear though is that Dr. Baumia has asked for uh, Sir Tekba to resign. What is his response? Oh, well, we know that Sir Tekwa wouldn't resign over that. And he stated categorically he's not going to step down because of that because he feels he didn't do anything wrong. In any case, Sir Tekwa believes he rather changed the status quo. Usually, when such um, cash comes into our um, accounts and goes to the Bank of Ghana account, you cannot invest or touch it. They lay idle till whatever projects they are uh, meant for, they are used um, for. In this case, with the infrastructure projects, there are a lot of proposals that have come up, but we haven't chosen really which project we are going to spend that money on. Okay. So whilst we are waiting, the money will sit in the account idle. Now, Sir Tekpe says this time round, he's changed the, the status quo and he's used the money, um, put it in, into an investment uh, um, portfolio, and it's going to yield us that money. Okay. Now, if you speak to most investors people, they say, well, this is not new actually. They claim others did it previously. Whether that's true or not, we're yet to clarify that. But if you look at it from the surface, it's a good um, thing to do. Okay. But by the law and technically, he's violated it. But I don't think he'll step down for that. Well, it's a legal issue and we've heard that some people are planning to go to court. We'll see the outcome of that. Thank you very much. Vivian Kailoko is head of business here at CTFM. Well, that's how we end today's edition of Politicos, which came to you from City TV. My name is Umar Rusanda Amadu. We hope you did enjoy the show. If you did, do put your comments in the comment section under the video. Thank you and have a great weekend.